All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at keeping users logged in. Now, a server is not going to keep an open connection. Uh, we're going to send it a request, it's going to send us a response, and it's going to close that connection immediately. So this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's going to free up resources and allow our server to be highly performant. But on the other hand, it is going to create a challenge for us when it comes to keeping our users logged in. So let's say, for instance, we fill out our, our login form and we hit submit and we send a request to the server that's carrying our username and our password. The server authenticates who we are and sends, sends back a response to us. This, since the server knows who we are via our username and password, it has no problem with sharing our data with us because it knows who we are. The problem is it's going to close that connection immediately and it's not going to know we are who we say we are if we are to click on another page on the website. You know, it's not going to know that we're the ones that just sent that last request that logged us in. And that's where sessions come in. So we're going to save a cookie on the user's device and if Next time that we go to a different page on that website, um, once we've logged in and we create that, that session cookie, uh, next time that we send another request for a different page, it's gonna send that cookie with that request. The, the server's gonna use that cookie to authenticate who we are, and then it's gonna be able to know who we are, and we're gonna be able to uh, maintain a state between the client and the server. Now, there is a uh, max age on that, so those will expire eventually, and they do need to be signed because we want to make sure we have a cookie saying we we are logged in and we are who we say we are we want to make sure that a hacker can't create their own so we're going to sign that value make sure we know we are the ones that created that cookie so uh, before we go any further uh, we're going to use the uh, gorilla slash context and the gorilla slash sessions uh, packages if you don't have those already go ahead and use the Go get command, and if you you can see we already have that one. And if you don't have context as well, you know do the same thing. Make sure you bring in that package as well. And let's take a look at our website and how it works. Better start it first. All right. So how we have this set up is we have uh, different pages like an index page and an about page. And if we're not logged in, we want it to take us back to that login page. So if I go to the index page, it doesn't take us there, redirects us back to login. Same thing with the about page. So, but once we, once we log in, And it says, hey, you logged in. Hit the home page. And go to the about page. And how this works is after we were logged in, it created this cookie with the session in it. And every time we send a request like to the about page, it's sending that cookie with that request, and the server can use that to authenticate we are who we say we are. And like I said, it's got a max age. It's a Good for this domain, and the name of it is session. And as you can see, our, our we do have values stored in here. Luckily, it's a little bit hard for others to see what it is. Um, let's go back to our code. Okay, so to do this um, in the sessions package, we're going to use the new cookie store function, and this is going to take a slice of byte of our secret key. This is the key that we're using to sign our cookies with. So we want to make sure that this is kept a secret. Um, obviously you wouldn't say super secret. You would just, you know, be some random sequence of characters that no one knows. And that will create our store. And so new cookie store creates a store and it's just a struct with a codec and we're going to be able to save our cookies in there. Um, but anyway, we're going to be able to create our store, which we're going to be able to save our cookies, or, you know, which are our key value pairs. Um, one good piece of advice that they had here on their, their GitHub page 
is if you use the OS package, short for operating system, and get in for get environmental variable. If you use this function, you can grab a environmental variable. Remember, environmental variables on your system are key value pairs. So, you know, here's our you know, polls, whatever, you know, a session key, whatever value is stored when you use that particular key. Uh, this can be really good so you don't accidentally say you won't accidentally say you're putting some code up, committing some code to GitHub. You don't accidentally uh, commit, you know, your, your secret key or, for instance, uh, if you have people working as a team on this, you could have um, them using one password for one of, on one password saved to one of their to their environmental variables, and you, on your production machine, you have a completely different key on that machine, and you just pass this code back and forth between the two. So pretty good advice there on their website, and taking a look at their website. Uh, GitHub slash Gorilla. Um, they have a whole bunch of uh, good packages here. Like I said, we're going to be using sessions to save secure cookies so we can maintain uh, a session. Uh, scheme is good because you can take form values and input those into a struct. Uh, Mux is a good multiplexer. You can create different handlers that are method specific. They you know, it's only handles post or get methods. Um, and we're going to be using the context uh, package as well. Anyway, we're going to create our store, and that's going to allow us to save our cookies. And like I said, we are we created new two new handlers, which is an about and an index uh, handler. Uh, here's something you need to be aware of on HTTP .listen and serve. I mean, we're using these packages. We want to make sure that we're freeing up all of our resources. We don't have a memory leak. Um, if you are using uh, the you know, Gorilla slash Mux, if you're using their multiplexer, you don't need this chunk of code. But this is basically just going to make sure we don't have a memory leak because we're going to be using the default serve Mux. So instead of, you know, so I can't just put nil here, which is the default serve Mux. I need to use the context package clear handler. So that way, um, some of these variables are getting cleaned up when they're, when they're done. Anyway, and our login handler again is just uh, serving up our login form. Now our login handler is going to do the same thing. It's going to grab username and password, and it's going to go ahead and check if the hash uh, that we have saved in our database is the same as the, uh, you know, the hash of our password, and if. And if it is successful, they are the same. This is going to equate to nil. And if it is nil, then we're going to go ahead and send them to the index page because they have successfully logged in. We'll send in that message saying, hey, you have logged in. Now we got a little bit of some extra code here. And basically, we're going to go ahead and create a session. We're going to save our user ID into that session. And then we're going to go ahead and save that uh, session. So we're going to make sure. Uh, we run session.save before we run this, or else we're going to run into a problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at session. So store.get and so store is an interface. It has uh, different methods here. We have our get. Um, I'm just going to return our cached session. Uh, we also have new and we have save, as you saw on the previous page. You want to, you know, if you want to persist the session, uh, you want to make sure you run save. And session, uh, the data type it is a struct. Um, you got a whole bunch of optional different fields here you can use. You have an ID string, options, is new store name. Um, the one, like I said, that we're going to be using uh, quite a bit would be values. And as you can see, values here. You know, we're using it like like a map because it is a map, and it's going to take anything. Being it's an empty interface, it can take any uh, any data type, and then it'll return for a key. And the value it's going to return can also be any data type because it's an empty interface. So this isn't a very uh, strict typing. Um, so 
kind of be careful, make sure you're using the data types you're expecting to use because they're giving you a lot of freedom there. Um, it's a little bit loose, but just make sure you're aware of that. So you can use anything as a key. I could use a string, use a number, whatever I want. And, you know, the value we return could be whatever we want as well. Okay, so we're going to save our user ID. So session.values, which is our map, and we're going to give it this, this key, and we're going to save what we have in the user ID uh, variable. And then, like I said, you want to save this before you execute your template. So after we hit the login page, as you can see, it immediately created a cookie with, with the name of it being session our values that we can pull out of it, and the other data as well. Now, store.get, you know, it's of course going to take our HTTP.request, but it's going to take our name as well. So we said, hey, we want to call that session, and so that's where this name come from. We get, we decide, hey, we're going to call this session. So everything went successful, it returns, we don't run the rest of this if, if, let's say for instance, this would only run if the password was incorrect. So, like I said, we want to check and see if the user is logged in. If they're not, we want to send them back to that login page. So, that is what this uh, chunk of code here is going to do for us. So, um, if they are logged in, you know, It'll go ahead and render the index page and give the pass in the message logged in like we want it to. So looking at this, store.get is going to return a session every single time. So if it finds a session, it's going to return it. And if there isn't one, it's going to go ahead and create one. Now remember, session.values is a map. So if we look for a key that doesn't exist, it's going to return false. But if there is a key that exists, it's going to return true. So for instance, let's say if someone wasn't logged in, like when the first time before we were logged in, we went tried to go to index, uh, index page and index handler ran. Well, we didn't have a user ID saved in there yet, so this equated to false, and then it ran this chunk of code, which redirected us back to our login page. So we're using the http.redirect, give it our writer, our request, our path, and then I used, we used HTTP status found. Uh, you could just as easily put in 302, both, you know, right here, which would be perfectly fine. Uh, both work just the same. Um, if you want to, in the HTTP package, there's a whole bunch of different constants there. Um, for instance, we were using the HTTP.status found because we're going to be redirecting. Uh, can't remember what some of these are. It's easy to look up. Like, hey, if you you get to use this one quite a bit, HTTP, HTTP dot status okay. If everything runs great, um, just so you know, there's quite a few of them there. So if it exists, this is true. This won't run because it's not, you know, you know it's gonna you know, turn the true to a false and it wouldn't run. Um, of course, the return means that we wouldn't run the rest of this. But anyway, if we are logged in, basically this chunk of code is just going to check and see if we're logged in. Um, same thing here with our about handler. We got this uh, same chunk of code and check and see if we're logged in. If we're not, redirect us back to the login page. Now, as you can imagine, as we add, as we add many, many more handlers, this could look a little bit cumbersome. So what we want to do is we want to make sure in our, one of our next videos, we're going to work with middleware and, you know, cause I could create a function or something. And even I create a function, it was a one line of code. You really, you kind of want to, uh, you don't want this in every, you know, extra stuff in every single one of these handlers. So middleware is going to help us add that and keep this a lot cleaner through all of our handlers in the future. Um, Again, in review, just make sure, you know, being that we're, after we log in, we're creating that cookie, 
and we're using that cookie for uh, more requests to the server to authenticate who we say we are because the request sends that cookie with it. Just make sure you protect uh, your key for when you're creating your store or else a hacker could use that to uh, create their own cookie, fake a cookie, and say, hey, I am logged in and get access when they should not be able to get access. Because remember, this is stored on the client and you should always be very careful with that. So as long as we have that signed, we know we are the ones that created that cookie and we know it wasn't uh, someone else. Uh, anyway, if you, uh, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. It really does help me out. Um, but if you have any questions, post them in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.